Anyways, uh, let's uh, talk about Geeked Week. Um, this was a whole week of Netflix doing the showcase each day, dedicating it to a different aspect of the streaming service. Day one was series, day two was film, day three was animation, day four was all dedicated to Stranger Things, and day five, which is actually later today, wow. uh, is going to be dedicated to Netflix uh, gaming. <laughs> And I don't know if you see it. You can game on Netflix wow. with your remote. And um, incredible. There's like I don't, I don't know what they're doing. Um, they they were showcasing the upcoming slate for 2022, and that's the crazy thing with Netflix. With these game shows, you have a lot of lot of times you have it's still of a game like yeah, I know we just started this, so it's been in works for years. But we don't have anything to show with Netflix. It's like yeah, that's our slate for the rest of 2022, <laughs> and it's coming out this year. <laughs> So that's at least exciting that you're getting this to see the stuff that's coming out pretty soon. Uh, one of the uh, things they kicked it off with was on the series department. Um, they showcased The Sandman, um, a series that Ooh. is, I think, this dark mystery type of fantasy show. And um, I was a bit disappointed when I realized it was based on a comic book from, I think, the early 90s. And I thought it was based on that E.T.A. Hoffman uh, short story that I had to read in college a couple of years ago. I was like, oh, that's so exciting. It's so like, ooh. But no, it's a comic. And yeah, I, I but don't do know you know who the comic it. is written by? No. Neil Gaiman. Uh, that that name rings a bell, but I don't know what else he's done. Do, do you think this is going to be a solid project? I'm extremely excited for this show. I haven't read the comics, but I've read up on the story and everything. Mm -hmm. it's just, I'm, not, I'm not a big comic book reader. Yeah. Uh, as we know, I don't read. Yeah, well, you can't as well. So, that's also an issue. Yeah, well, I, I think we read. haven't brought that Everything's, up. But... Every other, I have to turn like upside down. Yeah, that's what I was about to just, say. It's, it's too so much. hard. Yeah, it's so hard as an Australian to read books. Um, That's so tough for you. I'm very excited for The Sandman just because I'm a big mm -hmm. fan of Neil Gaiman. Hang on. <laughs> you got a Sandman? No, I don't. But I do have like Neil Gaiman books. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not in focus with it, but like I do... I do read once in a while and I have read some of his books and I've read um, a number of other ones as well, which I don't have any, actually don't actually have anything up there <laughs> to show off. But I, look, I have a book. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, it's crazy, right? Wow. Uh, <laughs> I should have held it up like this. Sorry. I should have held it up like this. <laughs> <laughs> Upside down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm excited because I, I do like Neil Gaiman as a writer. Mm -hmm. he's just really fun so I, I don't know if he has any attachment to the show at all but yeah uh yeah no i'm I, in comparison to what you said I, I am excited for this show it's it's playing the devil's advo advocate of being like or oh, <laughs> look at this short story from 1811 or something like that i don't know just because i i know it it's also funny because the, the i think there's this i don't know if it's still on but in german or at least in swiss tv as well uh, there's there's a there's a program that usually aired around 7 p.m. called The Sandman, and it was like you know someone just putting you to sleep with like little short stories and stuff like that. Pretty cute. Aww. And I used to watch that, so like cute. there's also a bit of memory here. But anyways, it looks interesting. Uh, um, but I, it didn't really grab me to be honest. Something I think that yields a lot of potential is uh, Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities, which will feature uh, eight different directors kind of having their own spin on a short story in the realm of horror. Uh, we got directors be behind Mandy, The Empty Man, Splice, The Babadook, The Vigil, Hannibal, uh, A Girl Walked Home Alone at Night, and even uh, The Twilight Director. <laughs> so... You know, a lot of variety there, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I thought it was a very, it's a very interesting concept. Yeah. And to attach, you know that someone's made it pretty successful if they can just attach their name and you get excited around it. Yeah. He's basically done a Tim Burton, hey, I'm just going to throw my name on this, have fun with it. Uh, similar to what David Fincher is basically doing with Love, Death, Robots now. I mean, he's, he's doing a bit of direction. Uh, I think he directed like one in the last season. Um, I don't know about the previous ones, but it's also just like his support. I, he's more of a producer here. It's, I mean, it's not like David Fincher's Love, Death, and Robots. Uh, but it, it's funny that like it, it's called Guillermo del Toro, but I, I don't think he's directing any of the shorts. Uh, it, no, it's it's so, it's like so yeah, it's, it's just like a showcase, um, you know. Tim Burton's A Nightmare Before Christmas. Tim Burton was yeah. the director of that movie, so yeah. he's just attached. That is crazy to it, and I guess he's just producing, and everyone knows him as the the horror. 
horror dude that has monsters. So yeah, I, I like the fact that his name's attached to it because you kind of know what you're getting yourself into in a way. Yeah, that's true. Totally, totally. And I think you got some solid directors there. I think it's it's no mistake to have Mandy, the Mandy director, as as top billing, uh, for this whole thing, and then followed by the Empty Man. Um, but still, even if like I'm not a big fan of of all of these films that they've directed previously, uh, they can certainly surprise. You know, with a short story, it's such a a different uh thing than this and i don't know how long these are gonna be i don't know if they're gonna be like short films actually or more like you know short film uh, like shorter films um that are closer to feature length i have no idea but uh, i'm super keen for this and um yeah we'll get it later in the year i would assume probably around halloween time if i had to make a guess about that then we also got a sneak peek for the live action One Piece show. I I don't know who asked for this. I, I think no one did. They they had a bit of a showcase for the set and the guy who plays L Luffy, I think is what the, the main character is called, was already so annoying as soon as he spoke. So I was like, I've never seen One Piece, but I guess if the lead character is annoying, you nailed it. And then um, there was First Kill, a coming of age fantasy show about a vampire and a vampire hunter uh, falling in love uh it's also featuring um tiktok songs to appeal to a zoomer audience it's kind of the impression what i got from that show then the midnight club uh shows its characters awkwardly looking straight into camera and uh reading a bunch of lines off uh it comes from the um talent behind midnight mass and the haunting of bly manor which i know uh luckily you really enjoyed so I guess it doesn't really give you much, you know, Mike Flanagan isn't really showing anything besides like a mood palette and showcasing, I guess, the actors. Uh, are you excited for the Midnight Club? Well, you know what they say, keep your cards to your chest because you can't see your cards. And that's how yeah, you yeah, win yeah. a game of poker. So we're playing a right. poker with uh, Mickey right now. So I can't wait to see what he's going to give me this time in terms of spooks. Do that with my taxes as well. I just keep the money yep. and don't show them. <laughs> uh, yep. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great. I mean, I think uh, I'll, I'll try and give this a watch. Uh, I think I watched like one or two episodes of uh, Midnight Mass, but didn't finish it. And I haven't seen Bly Manor yet. But uh, if this proves to be like a hit, I might go back and actually uh, give those a watch as well. And then um, finally in the series department, we got the first look at uh, the Resident Evil show that's releasing quite soon, about a month from now on July 14, uh, which seems to focus on the Ob Umbrella Corporation. Uh, so, Lachlan, I've never watched or played any of the Resident Evil games so far, although I do ab own about a half of, of the games in my Steam library. Uh, what about the movies? I haven't seen the movies ever. Uh, PW, you haven't seen the what no i almost went to a screening last year for or was it yeah no last year for that new one raccoon city i think but i was just busy that day and i didn't watch it so i still have to this day oh, to watch the single no Resident not the Evil not thing. that not that shitty netflix one that came out a year ago i'm talking well, about the the resident evils none of them wow i own a bunch of them on on dvd but i've never uh put them in and actually I watched them all the way through. Hey. I've only seen clips. I'm not a Resident Evil fanboy. Yeah. But I have played through the majority of the games, not all of them, but the majority of the games. Mm -hmm. I have also watched all of the original um, Paul W.S. Anderson movies mm -hmm. with uh, a classic Mila Djokovic mm -hmm. as the main character. I've, I've watched those. And yeah. I, I don't love them, but I've watched them for entertainment in the past and they do deliver for the majority of the the part. I'm just sick of being disappointed with the film adaptation of Resident Evil because the story was great. The stories are great for the original one and two. Mm. So stick with it, I guess. Yeah. Not. So they decide to do something else and go down this line. Now, this one does like they did the Raccoon City and it was a shitty adaptation. It was pretty cheesy and poorly done. Mm -hmm. This one looks a little bit more interesting. Well, I guess we'll see, but you know, once you've been let down once, you just they just can't seem to let this IP die in the movie and TV world. They just they just don't let it die. Like stop. 
just do the games stop doing the movies yeah and i think the the movies are super successful still and they're doing constantly doing remakes for like the older games because they're so beloved um so i think it's a franchise to stay maybe just not in the adaptation because like at the end of the day resident evil from at least what i can gather is so much about the experience of survival and that gets really repetitive because you can't replicate that excitement usually in films you can or you can do it like once or twice and then it gets repetitive then you got to work in character stuff and i mean i don't know maybe maybe they have like great potential there as well from the stories uh from the games but um yeah uh i'm just seeing how much yeah. the last resident evil um it's called the final chapter actually made at the box office oh uh, yeah definitely the final chapter so the budget was estimated to be 40 million and it grossed 27 million in the US but worldwide the at the GBO it did a uh, 312 million so definitely probably was very popular uh in Asia. Yeah 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 probably yeah. No, that that would uh, maybe I'll put out like very popular. yeah maybe I'll, I'll like put up something where it was successful over the world. I I sometimes splice in those those edits that extra bit of information just for those of you maybe listening, I think there's about a third of you just listening on Apple Podcasts and you're missing out on the video feed on Spotify and on, on YouTube. Uh, but, but, but yeah, interesting. Um, so wh wh what's the show you're most looking forward to uh, out of the selection we just talked about? Is it The Sandman? Uh, Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet Guillermo del Toro. of Curiosities. Okay. I, feel, I feel like that was the coolest one of them all. Yeah, uh, I also thought that nineteen uh, eighteen ninety nine. Was I was about to bring very, that up. Because very like, interesting as well. That's my my pick because I was. I, I, have you watched any of Dark? I I watched the first season, I believe, but I never finished the show. And I've been told I should finish it because like season two, and I think they did a third season are excellent. Yeah. They are. I think they nailed it. Uh, it's a lot of like build up and stuff that really culminates in an ending that is uh quite satisfying um in the narrative and emotionally i think it it's it's a phenomenal show and it's great to see something done from um a german production company because they're usually pretty safe with what they do a lot of rom-coms a lot of like crime stuff at least the stuff that like we watch here or uh, i don't watch but like a lot of people do so it's great to have like sci-fi stuff and this seems like another another hit if it comes from the same talent uh, it also has um, one of the the actors who was in Dark returning for this. Uh, so yeah, I'm super keen for uh, 1899. That's pretty much it for the series. Now let's move on uh, to the movies. And um, apparently, Zack Snyder is working on another uh, film over on Netflix called Rebel Moon, which actually just cast Anthony Hopkins and already uh, has uh, Charlie Hunnam. Uh, Sophia Butella and Ray Fisher attached to this um, sci-fi adventure movie it's set in space. I don't know. Is it set in space? Maybe I've been uh, influenced by Summer Game Fest that I just think everything is set in space now. But that's that. Uh, they didn't have anything really to show for it yet other than I think a costume test or something like that. But I guess that's for the, the Snyder heads. Then we got a new film with Jamie Foxx called Day Shift from J.T. Perry. Uh, who was a stunt coordinator on John Wick 2 and uh, also on Gemini Man and um, F9. And it's about a hardworking dad out to provide for his daughter's, uh, for his daughter, uh, uses a boring pool cleaning job as a front for his real gig, hunting and killing vampires. So that's coming to Netflix on August 12th. Uh, <laughs> like, what did you make of, of, of Day Shift? Because, like, I had the impression this could be in a pretty... Like, fun, dumb, fun movie uh, about vampires hunted by Jamie Foxx. Exactly. I'm in. Dumb, yeah. fun. Z vampires. Jamie Foxx. Uh, front as a pool cleaning business. I'm in. Yeah. Done. You I, sold me. I like my pool clean that I don't have. So, yeah. Yep. And I got some vampires here I'm, as well. I'm in. I'm ver worried yep. for all the Australians that might be on the set here because, you know, gravity works we different for you. We don't get vampires. You. You don't, you don't. <laughs> we, the sun is always out 24 seven. Right. I just thought because upside down that there's a, there's a vampire joke in there, but that's also fair. You just can't hide from the sun ever, but that's that. I think yep. if Netflix 
is set out to do because like this seems like the type of movie or Jamie Foxx is probably pretty expensive that they would do in the future, which is like the type of red notice mass appealing stuff that is easily consumable. If that's the stuff that they'll produce, uh, fed it on the line, thinks Netflix has a place to stay in the industry. I hope they still do the occasional more auteur centric, uh, filmmaker type of stuff, but this is fine by me. Uh, hopefully it turns out to be an entertaining film. Um, at least you can get, uh, expect a lot of good action. Uh, from a film uh, directed by a stunt coordinator. Then uh, we got two projects from uh, Norway. Uh, one of them called Troll from the Tomb Raider director Rur Utak, featuring um, big trolls and then blasted an action comedy about a wedding interrupted by aliens. That, that gives me a bit of like Edgar Wright's The World's End type of vibes uh, in, in the way it's shot and feels like over-the-top action. I'm always down for Norway to do stuff. Recently, they've had some good stuff at festivals. They've had the worst person in the world. Uh, they, they proved to be quite a solid uh, film industry. And if they get more um, bigger production stuff like this, with like a troll fantasy feature and then a uh, kind of sci-fi comedy, I'm down. I'm down for Norway to uh, make it up the ranks of like a, a big uh, nation for film. Uh, what did you make of, of these two trailers? Troll was probably my favorite because I don't know if you've seen the Troll Hunters movie. I haven't, no. It's super underrated. It's like a found footage style movie. Mm -hmm. uh, that was fun. I haven't seen it in a long time and it kind of made me want to go back to it. So yeah, I have good memories of that. Very excited. Mm -hmm. I, I just like mythical style stuff. So this is super interesting in a realistic format. So I'm mm. very excited for that. Yeah. And the other one was, uh, which one was the other one? Sorry, Blasted. Blasted, uh, which seems a bit more that one generic, was... if I'm being honest. But just uh, with... Uh... I wouldn't say generic. I thought that one was a bit of fun. So I'm kind of keen for that one as well. But I probably wouldn't hold my breath and... Ca like, if I had to choose between what are you going to watch, Blasted or Trolls, I'd probably go and watch Trolls. Mm. Uh mm. Not to be mistaken for the uh, animated movie Trolls, right? But the Norwegian Trolls. Yeah. So, and when I say Norwegian Trolls, well, I, I don't mean that in a derogatory term. I mean the movie <laughs> that was made in Norway. Yeah, I mean by Norwegians. Look, and it's called Trolls. The big quotation, trolls, but tro it... open quotation Trolls, close quotation quotation Trolls. If the have trolls I got myself movie... a bit clear? Uh, yeah, I think you have, but I think. One thing that uh, the Trolls movie established is that I think in the second one, which don't ask me why I watched that one. Uh, You've seen him? I, only the second one. Um, it's uh, it's about like fi finding the music <laughs> within the or everyone can be, uh, everyone has talent or I, 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 I don't know. Anyways, I think that leaves the potential for this big troll to have a beautiful voice as well well and um burst out to probably something justin timberlake wrote 15 years ago uh you never know um and maybe there's a <laughs> norwegian pop star in him all along uh it would be quite inspiring to be honest and uh yeah so if if that's not happening i'm really disappointed by troll now i've set up the expectation that i want him to sing um which no, there's no tie to this next one. I thought uh, I'll try to bridge over to uh, the school of good and evil, uh, which is it's basically a show that feels like it would fit perfectly on on Disney Plus. I don't know if it's go gonna have any like darker themes or whatever, but uh, it's it's a school for people who turn out to be the good guys or the villains later on in, in life. I I I don't I don't know what this is. I think it's like fairy tale influenced. <laughs> Uh, it's just really bizarre to me that it's like, I guess it's just IP at the end of the day, you know? We know these fairy tales, let's put the characters in, uh, and then I, I don't know actually what they're doing. It's it's so weird to me. But uh, Lachlan, what did, you, what did you make of it? At least a bit rambled. I don't care. Yeah, I mean, me neither. It's definitely for a different audience that is just like, look, look, there's a fairy tale. There's an apple that's bitten in. That's probably Snow White. And I, I don't know if they try to misdirect and actually make some heroes the villains or it just feels super generic. And uh, 
Anyways, let's move on to animation. Um, there were uh, two films that I would uh, shout out quickly. The first one um, didn't really leave a great impression on me because I did like the style. It, it looked really pretty cheap to me. But uh, it has uh, Carl Urban staring in it. Uh, it's called Sea Beast, about a vampire. Uh, they go up against a sea beast. And I think then for most of the movie, at least from what I could make out from the trailer uh, is that he's stuck on the island with a little girl so so that's that uh comes out on july 8th and then um the second one a movie from uh, kit cuddy called intergalactic an animated series uh with a really stacked a stacked cast timmy timothy chalamet and Vanessa hutchins christopher abbott uh laura harry uh ty dollar sign uh, macaulay Culkin, jaden smith and um has a really interesting visual style as well i think i would describe it as really close to into the spider-verse but also a hint of like the witness in it if i like just 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 like a, a bit of spice just a tiny tiny pinch of it uh but i really liked i really liked the look of it no the style was awesome it uh, kind of grabbed me immediately so yeah. yeah i'm pretty much in on that one Mm -hmm. The other one, I, the other uh, the other movie, I didn't really care about. Uh, I think it's it's just like another really safe Netflix movie that doesn't really do anything different. It's just there to exist. I believe Antigalactic is also the name of Kid Cudi's new album. Obviously, when you look at the cast, a lot of them are also, uh, well, I don't know about all of them, but uh, some of them uh, have an involvement in, in music, obviously. So there's going to be a big focus on, on music in that show, and it's going to be a big part of it. So I'm really looking forward to this. I think it has a lot of potential, and uh, yeah, I'm really keen for it. Uh, and it comes out later in 2022. So I think that uh, wraps it up for a Geeked Week. Uh, obviously, next week we have to come back and talk about <laughs> the announcements they are making for the gaming side of Netflix. Uh, 